or your first interaction that you're going to have with the prospect, you are going to define the problem. We're good at that. We understand our prospect's business. We have the knowledge and insight to know that we can truly change their lives for the better. We can make an impact. In some cases, we're game changers. Now, we have to show them that. So then we have to solve this problem. Now, we're not done. Because in this, remember, we are all about creating the authority. We also want them to be part of the community. So think throughout this process of how you can also engage with that prospect at several different levels throughout their organization and engage them in your base of relationships through this problem. So then the next thing that's going to come up, we're going to have another problem. Because how many of you solve one problem and then that opens another can of worms? Always happens. I can't tell you how many times someone comes to me and says, I have a sales problem. And so we dig in and we solve their sales problem, but then guess what we find out? We find out that maybe their sales problem is called by, caused by a retention issue. And they've got issues with onboarding clients so that they're not keeping that new business that they're landing. So that's just one example from my business. You probably have countless others for yours. But we know that there will be other challenges that are addressed. Now, stay with me on this overall concept. And I am not telling you to give your service away for free. Let me just put that out there right now. But you do have to create value. So this entire journey has to be about value creation all the way through. So now the social triggers that we have here, authority is going to be playing in probably right about here. I'm not very good with drawing my arrows. And then, throughout this, what I encourage you to think about is you're going to define another problem. Then, as we're talking to them, we're going to be defining this problem and say, you know what? I get this. Let's go back and redefine the problem in the next stage of the buyer journey. And then, I'm going to solve that one too. And then throughout this, we're going to continue to identify and define the problem. And then you may have to do this two or three times with that business owner or that business leader in order to help them really understand just where and how you're going to fit. So now how this works, here's what I want you to think about. This is not a, you know what, I'm going to get together and I'm going to spend 18 hours with you solving all of these problems in your business until you finally write me a check. That's not what this is about. In a lot of cases, you're going to find that this buyer journey is taking place in social media. So think about it. You post a blog post or you share a video like I'm doing today. I'm giving this content away for free because I recognize that the more I help you, the more I am establishing authority, the more you recognize you are a part of a community, the more you anticipate hearing from me and talking to me because I'm bringing value to you. And then at some point you're gonna recognize that either you or someone you know would be a perfect fit for me as a client. And then I get those introductions all day, every day. That's what you have to think about is maybe the solutions and the problems aren't just through direct one-to-one -one providing solutions. Maybe these solutions are through you sharing blogs, white papers, cheat sheets, how-to guides, or better yet, how about introducing one of your great referral relationships who is brought in throughout their buyer journey to solve compelling challenges. And then guess what? Now we can truly leverage the power of that other messenger in order to make the sale for you. So if you think about it, our sales process may get a little bit longer, but it has to be intentional. Recognize that your typical sales process is going to be between 8 and 22 touches. And every one of those touches 
has to create value. There is no more of this, I'm just checking in, just wanted to touch base, wanted to hear what's going on with you, haven't talked to you for a while. Well, if you haven't talked to them for a while, then that's a pretty good indicator that they've opted you out of their buyer journey. And what we have to do is we have to continue to be relevant and bring solutions when and where and how they need. So we may have this cycle. Here, we are going to outline the relationship. This is where we make our offer. And it needs to be a compelling offer. They need to recognize just where and how they're going to fit into it. But this offer is made after you have demonstrated what your abilities are to serve someone that looks just like them. And then at that point, you're going to get over here, and now we're going to start to capture business. Now, there's a couple things I want you to think about here as I'm talking through this process. So the first thing is that you need to recognize that your best referral relationships are people who are already doing business with you or who have done business with you. Because what happens when you're engaging with these people is you truly are capturing the authority and credibility by who they are. <clears throat> They're a part of a community because in a lot of cases when you work with respected business owners, they're going to hang out with other people who are respected business owners. And that's going to shorten a lot of this trip to social proof. And then it also has people anticipating where and how you're able to help them and what you can do for them. So throughout this process, now what we're doing is we truly are building relationships and being very intentional with how we're doing this. So what I want you to do is I want you to think about what and how you are going to take today's information and you are going to identify how to drive and add even more value throughout your buyer journey or through your seller journey and engaging with the buyers through theirs. Because there's, again, there's so many amazing opportunities that are happening right now. Because truly, this piece right here is where it can be game changing for you. I have people reaching out to me that I, they engaged right here at the very beginning. They had a problem. I gave them some ideas. In some cases, I opened doors and solved their problem. And that was all they needed. And that's okay. But because I laid that foundation and I provided value, now they're coming back to me two years, three years, in some cases, 10 or more years later. But if you're in this for the long haul, remember that we always want to be leaving a good footprint behind with every person that we interact with. And again, I encourage you to think about how you can leverage your referral relationships and all those strategic partners, or perhaps it's other services within your organization. Maybe your best referral relationships are internal. But think about how you can leverage and help someone else get to revenue as a part of your own seller journey. Because when you do that, now you have someone else managing your pipeline, and all you have to do is just reach out and talk about what they've done to make an impact in your life and what the results are of their solution within the organization, because you get credit for that too. So I've given you a lot to think about today. I've talked about the overall environment of business development and how it's changed. I've talked about this consultative sales approach, which still is relevant. We still have to be able to engage, identify needs. We just have to be a lot faster and a lot better at telling our stories and helping our prospects recognize where and how they truly are going to fit into your world and even better yet, how you're going to fit into theirs. So thanks so much for taking time and, and joining us this morning. And I really encourage you to think about others and what they can do for you. And not just others as in your referral relationships, but always think about where you make an impact with someone else and you leave emotional equity in that account it's going to come back to you tenfold. 
My favorite rule that I always like to leave everybody with is Emerson's Law of Compensation. To get what you want, you've got to help others get what they want. Have a great day and I wish you good selling.